Good morning, my friends. How are you getting on? Are you well? I hope you're doing just fine and I hope you're ready for a brand new week, brand new working week. But as for me personally, I'm off this week and I'm very excited about it. You know, I, I'm having basically a week's holidays, but I'm not going to slack off, which means I'm not going to be lazy and just sit around watching TV. I'm going to work a lot. I'm going to make loads of videos, write loads of articles, make some improvements to my blogs, and I'm also going to update the Fluency Gym Coach program that I just released recently, you know. There's a small, couple small additions to be made, you know. But anyhow, today's English idiomatic expression is in-depth research on in-depth research to be more specific because whenever you use this phrase in-depth research obviously you're going to use the indefinite article an in front of it because in-depth the in begins with a vowel you know and it demands the definite article to be an instead of a uh, a like you know anyhow let's uh, continue with some sample sentences but before we proceed to that, let me have another sip of coffee to fully wake up. Ah, that's great. I got, up, I got up an hour ago or so, responding to my emails, and uh, now I'm, uh, I'm feeling ready. I'm feeling like recording this video, you know. But anyhow, let's come up with some sample sentence. Prior to creating my latest product, Fluency Gym Coach Program, which I released a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? I'm not really sure. But anyhow, prior to creating the product, I had to do an in-depth research into the matter, you know, and namely, I had to do some research in human psychology, and I had to I had to go through all the previous blog posts I've created over the years and I had to put a structure onto the product. Basically, I had to come up with lesson topics, with the, with the best possible topics that would comprehensively include everything that I've ever come up with, with all the man fluency management techniques, strategies, with all the different different uh, small pieces of advice I've been giving to my audience and to my customers over the years and basically I had to amalgamate it all in the best way possible to create the product, the motivational course, right? And uh, obviously, as I just said a couple of seconds ago, it demanded a, an in-depth research into the matter, you know, and I hope that I complete the task successfully. And this was the first sample sentence. So basically, prior to creating the product, I had to conduct an in-depth research. To do a research, to conduct a research, same thing, but you may want to use the word conduct because it sounds uh, a little bit more intelligent, a bit smarter, you know, to conduct a research. So basically, the, the longer collocation is to conduct an in-depth research. And let me think of another example, but right before that, let me have another sip of my coffee. I'm sorry guys if I offend you by this behavior, but I'm just uh, getting thirsty from speaking so much. And on top of everything else, I'm a little bit sick this morning. As they say, I'm a little bit under the weather, which means I'm not feeling well. You know, I have sore throat and blocked nose which probably tells in my voice, you know, my voice is probably huskier, a bit deeper than normally, you know. And speaking of colds and uh, cold remedies, you know, different medicines we use to treat colds, I'm pretty sure that any in-depth research would actually prove that it's actually fruitless, it's pointless, to use loads of those powders, you know, those powders you can put in water and then drink, like containing uh, vitamin C and uh, some painkiller, and then they normally have some taste added on, like lemon or black currant or whatever, you know. They 
cost quite a lot of money, you know. And I, I think it's all totally unnecessary because I believe that any in-depth research would would prove that colds will pass in seven days. Whereas if you treat them, you'll get rid of them in a week's time. <laughs> so you got to drill, my friends, basically. No matter what you do, whether you treat your cold or you don't, it'll just go away in about a week's time. It's actually been proven that uh, cold is just your body's natural defense mechanism. Uh, well, cold is not a defense mechanism, but cold is just representation, manifestation of your body's natural defense mechanism kicking in and starting acting. You know, basically, it doesn't allow the virus to go deeper into your body. I suppose that's how it works. Maybe I'm not totally, totally in the right, you know, but uh, I don't think that I'm, uh, I'm uh, badly mistaken here. You know, I believe that colds is just a normal thing, and basically your your immune system is a little bit weakened, and those uh, bacteria living in your throat and your nose or wherever they just uh, overwhelm the first defense barrier of your body. You know. But obviously your body fights back and uh, it doesn't allow that bacteria to go deeper into, into your system, basically. And it's normal. You get black nose, you cough, you get all those symptoms and you should take rest, obviously. You shouldn't exert yourself, but I believe that if you read into it, you'll find out that any in-depth research would tell you that using all these powders and... Uh, painkillers and all that sort of thing or even antibiotics which is even more nonsensical and actually it actually brings about uh, virus mutations you know viruses hold on viruses or bacteria viruses yes it's been proven that antibiotics actually don't kill viruses they can only treat bacterial infections but antibiotics are used so so commonly you know the, their use is widespread no matter what you have you just go to a doctor and they'll just prescribe you antibiotics which is total nonsense as I said because if you have a virus antibiotics not not just that it, they don't help but they basically damage your body's immune system that they, they damage your your guts you know your natural bacteria uh, natural balance of your gut bacteria it kills the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria you know but the virus which actually causes your illness is not killed at all and which is even worse it mutates and every year they have to manufacture and produce new antibiotics to supposedly kill all those new strains of bacteria or viruses or whatever I don't even really know how it works with their they are supposed to kill viruses or they're not, I don't think so, but the fact is, matter of fact is that viruses mutate and in the very worst case scenario there will be some deadly virus which we won't be able to fight against, you know, and that'll be, that'll bring about the doom of the civilization, God forbid, touch wood, as the Irish say, you know, touch wood to avoid the bad thing to happen, you know, to bring about luck, basically. Um, I'm a bit thirsty again, guys. Uh, this is my daughter's mug with, with Dougie's picture, you know. So I started using it and it became my mug. And uh, let me think of another example using the word in-depth research. Recently, I read online that all the information uh, in relation to the global warming has been actually wrong and all that supposedly in-depth research that scientists have been conducting over the years and proving, supposedly proving that the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere is steadily rising and that in a couple of years time we will all have palm trees growing outside and uh, basically the temperatures will have risen to levels experienced only in equatorial countries, you know, and the world's ocean levels will rise by a couple of meters and coastal areas will be flooded and all that thing, you know. Now they say that all that 
supposedly in-depth research has been misleading at best and, and totally totally this what's the word is informative or something like that I'm not really sure is informative this like the, the opposite to information information and not the lack of information but this info I should actually look it up online guys you never seen me do, do any online research this information yeah this information exactly yeah. false information that is intended to mislead yeah especially that it is released by government to a rival power of the or the, or the media yeah exactly you know that they actually say that all that so-called in-depth research is disinformation not disinformation yeah, disinformation at worst and just slightly misleading at best you know basically the conclusion is that we can't actually listen to what the mainstream media is telling us because a few years down the line it may turn out that uh, it's not true at all you know so you can't really believe what we read we have to make our own observations and draw draw logical conclusions and from what I'm seeing currently you know I'm seeing global I'm seeing the coming of an ice age basically global cooling because we've had unusually cold springtime this year in Ireland here and the same goes with my country the country of my origin is Latvia and from what I hear having minus 19 degrees in late March early April is slightly unusual to say the least you know so what I'm experiencing here in my position here in Ireland is some sort of a global cool down you know meltdown not meltdown but cool down basically coming of a new ice age that's what I see that's my first-hand experience with the climate change and I wouldn't say that it's global warming but then again during the summertime we have these incredible heat waves hitting the central Europe, the southern Europe and parts of Russia were badly, badly affected by very, very hot weather. So I don't know what to think, guys, you know. Whether that in-depth research has been proven wrong or, or the cold weather simply proves that it's all true and that the average temperature is actually rising or it can be true can it guys if you have very hot weather at summertime and very cold winters then those two extremes kind of balance each other out and the average the average global temperature wouldn't have risen by that much you know which was actually the case you know that's what was discussed in the article and uh, it basically proved that well, the in-depth research was slightly ex exaggerated, to say the least, you know. But anyhow, that was the third example of the English idiomatic expression. Well, it's not really an idiomatic expression in this case, guys. It's actually a collocation. I should have actually started the video with saying that, you know, but it is the case now. It's a collocation, in-depth research, you know, words that go together, you know, in-depth research. Idiomatic expression is is rather a phrase you can use in in, in, in conversations which has a sentence structure, you know. Say for instance, you know what I mean, and uh, to say the least, to be more specific, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, it's like a ready-to-go small sentence, but in-depth research is a smaller unit of sentences. It's a, it's a few word combination basically, and it's a typical co-location, my friends. Okay, thanks a lot for watching this video and see you soon again. Bye-bye.